Let's go through the remote insulin transfer. They are called insulin analog. Also called the dependent insulin. Most of the statements here are from the same article where Jayabhati has also described their answer. So the main advantage of this is the lesser incidence of hypoglycemia. And patients are happy because they have to take the injections mostly once a day only. And uh, the treatment is uh, flexible, safer, and simpler. And the uh, faster acting pre bandy insulin and long acting basal insulin because they, the combination of these two is, uh, will be mimicking the normal insulin response or uh, secretion in the body. So, uh, as I told you earlier in our diabetic class lecture, the uh, pancreas produces a, a, a continuous basal level of insulin to take care of the uh, ever-going glucose metabolism in our body. But once you eat, there is a sudden surge in the uptake of glucose into the blood. Then there is a immediate bolus release of insulin to control that hyperglycemia and bring it back to within the normal state. So the fundamental point all of us have to understand is insulin secretion is a biphasic release. One is a continuous basal release, second is a bolus release whenever there is after a prandial meal when there is a hyperglycemia. So by combining these two types of insulin. One which will have a long acting, it will supply the basal requirement and a very short acting which will immediately take care of the postprandial surge in the blood sugar. That is the idea with which these things have been made. And this is another important point. You are analog when used as monomers. As I told you earlier, it should be a single unit of insulin, not the multiple units club together which are called dimers and spectrumers. So a monomer only can go and occupy the receptor and produce its effect. So the monomers are between aspart and micro, and uh, the long actings are glargin, vetamine, and being good at which are, uh, um, third one was a uh, recent generation as the two older ones. And uh, they have <coughs> The, this is another important point. The B26 to 30 region is critical for insulin receptor recognition and the site preferred for structural alteration to nabicide. So the manufacture of these newer insulins are mainly done by the alteration of the amino acid sequence in the beta chain or B chain between the 26 to 38 amino acids. And uh, uh, it is important for Formation of dimers also and uh, produce drugs which can act for a longer time. So, the examples of short acting are this Lispro, Aspart, and Rubicin. And for long acting, you have Glargin, Betimer, and B. Glodac. And other insulins, of course, Algolin, Inhaled Insulin, and other roots like your continuation sheets and pumps and all these things are all other methods of insulin administration using the same drug. And uh, short acting for so insulin, it is a so she said the inversion of the two amino acids at position 28 and 29 in beta chain. This is a nice picture I got where this is the normal human insulin, where you can see the this is the beta chain, they have highlighted the last four uh, amino acid sequence threonine, proline, lysine, and uh, threonine again. So here the proline is at 28 position and lysine at 29 position. By inverting it, taking lysine to 28 and bringing proline to 29, they are able to get this drug called Lispro. Okay? So it is the near inversion of the sequence. And uh, this has uh, <coughs> uh, this has no effect on the receptor binding, but block, it blocks the formation of dimer and dexamer. So this is how the 
time still is able to act as a short acting because it remains as a monomer and doesn't become a hexamer and dimer. So this picture will tell you what is a dimer. So you can, this is one insulin molecule, this is another insulin molecule, and both of them are attached to each other. We call it as a dimer. And here you can see six insulin molecules plus together to become a hexamer. And uh, this <coughs> allowed large amount of monomeric insulin to be available for post-prandial and or after meal injection. So it will be able to act rapidly and uh, injected 15 minutes after meals also, it will be able to control the blood sugar. And uh, it also keeps the glycolated hemoglobin level at a very uh, acceptable level. So that is another advantage. And uh, the patients are very happy and it is safe in pregnancy also. So in pregnancy induced diabetic patients, you can use this as an effective regular insulin with no teratogenic effect. Even if you use it in the first trimester, it will not cause any effect of the fetus. So that is a safe one for insulin withdrawal. Now coming to the ASPAR, <coughs> it is created by recombinant DNA technology. And again, the substitution is done of proline at 28 position with aspartic acid. So that is why it is called aspar because it is substituted with aspartic acid, it is called aspar. And again, this picture will tell you, here you can see the normal human insulin, proline is at 28 position. So this proline has been removed and the aspartic acid has been included in B28 position. So this has become insulin aspar. And this also prevents the formation of hexamers leading to rapid absorption of monomers. Glycemic control is as good as uh, other drug also. Now the third one, insulin glucin, they differ from the human insulin by substitution of asparagine at the position of B3. It is not at the end of the B chain, but it is the beginning of the B chain and B3 by lysine. And there is a second substitution of lysine at position B29 by glutamate. So the earlier withdraw and aspar we saw there are only <coughs> substitutions at the end, only one substitution or one, one inversion. Whereas in this blue leucine, there are two substitutions, one at the third level, beta 3 and the B3 position. You can see here, this is the B chain. The whole thing is the B chain. And at Position 3, this is a normal human insulin where there is a uh, aspartic. Uh, this amino acid in B3 position has been replaced with lysine and B3. And the second uh, substitution is the proline is uh, replaced with glutamate. So that is why it's called blue lysine. And, uh, <coughs> The mode of action here is not because of the monomeric nature. Here it causes what is called insulin receptor phosphorylation. So if you go and check for the mode of action of insulin uh, on the cells, there is an insulin receptor which has got an external portion and an internal portion. So the insulin monomer molecule will go and occupy as a ligand and the uh, external portion where the two beta in the subunits of the, it is just like your uh, acetylcholine receptor at the neuromuscular junction, which has got the two beta, um, in, uh, two beta alpha, uh, gamma, delta uh, subunits. There is also two beta subunits for insulin receptor. So the insulin monomer will go and occupy the external portion of this receptor and it is trigger a chain of events at the internal portion, which is called internalization. And there you will have a phosphorylation of the insulin receptor substrate. And that is what is being triggered by the insulin by activating or causing the phosphorylation. And it has got also an anti-apoptic activity which uh, contracts the autoimmune disorder and lipotoxicity. So it is more useful in patients with uh, type 1 diabetes, where autoimmune problem is the main cause. So glucin has come as a great boom for all these people to reduce the uh, further worsening of type 1 diabetes also. 
and uh, they, but the risk of tumor density that is uh, any uh, tumor growth is more because the position uh, substitution is taking place between 28 and 30 which uh, causes an increased binding to insulin force factor 1 and this causes a mitogenic activity so the chances of long term use producing a tumor or a cancer is very high with this insulin. Now coming to the next insulins, they are all um, for more than 24 hours action, but their uh, mode of uh, action is uh, it's not by being a monomer or by remaining hexamer. There are two methods of approach, how they produce this, by changing the insulin pH to neutral, it causes a precipitation when it is injected into the body tissue. And this delays the absorption. So there is a slow absorption after you inject the drug because the pH of the solution is neutral. In the body pH, it gets uh, precipitated and becomes a depot, delayed. Uh, and the second thing is it, uh, the serum carrier uh, to which it gets attached also it causes a slow and delayed action because only the free fraction of the drug will be active. So the examples are insulin glargin and the structural uh, design is made by substituting asparagine with a glycine at position 21 of the HA. So here it is not the B chain alone as a B chain in the earlier neural uh, short acting insulin. Here A chain amino acid is also changed. In addition to that, there is an alteration in the B chain. You can see this in this picture. You can see here this is the A chain and this is the B chain. And then the A chain, what happens? There is a substitution at position 21. That is the last amino acid. As you all know that A chain has got 21 amino acid. So at the last 21st amino acid, it is uh, uh, replaced by glycine. So that is the first change that is happening in A21 position. And in the B chain, at the end of the B chain, after the 30th position, what happens? It is uh, attached with the two arginine residues. So you, you can see extra two. So 30 becomes 32. So extra two arginines are added and it is elongated. The beta chain gets elongated. So instead of the normal 30 amino acid sequence, it becomes a 32 amino acid sequence. So this modification helps it to make it uh, shift the pH from 5.4 to 6.7. Okay? And makes it less soluble at physiological pH and more soluble at acidic pH. And uh, the glycine substitution of A chain gives the stability, stabilizes the hexamer structure, therefore contributing to delayed delivery of the depot. So the A chain only makes it remain as a hexameric form and get converted slowly to monomeric to become active. And uh, this is because of this pH variation, you cannot mix it. Just like you cannot mix typhetone with sarcomethonine in the olden days. Common question the examiners used to ask why when you mix sarcomethonium and uh, typhetone, you get a presentation in the syringe. The answer for that is sarcomethonium is acidic in pH. Whereas typhetone, all of you know, is highly alkaline. 10.4 is the pH of typhetone. So when you mix both an acidic and an alkaline solution, you will automatically get a precipitation. Okay? It will become cloudy. And pharmacodynamic action also will be affected. And this is the duration of action. Injection site pain is more here than you have a disadvantage. And uh, even though it has got more affinity, uh, it has uh, to factor one, but uh, it also reported to cause more retinopathy changes. And the second drug is insulin determined retimer, which is done by modifying the binding to serum protein, which prolongs the action. And for creating the hexameric form, the B30 B30 is removed. 30th uh, mm -hmm. molecule of uh, amino acid is removed, 
and it is acetylated with protein chain fatty acid uh, to lysine 29 so 29 position you have lysine then threonine so that 30th amino acid is removed instead of that you attach a protein chain fatty acid so it becomes very elongated there only two amino acids will be glad a glad thing that they added here protein chain amino and uh, fatty acid is added this uh, causes it to bind reversibly with albumin so this one helps to bind it with the albumin plasma so only free insulin determinant is biologically active so slowly it has to get dissociated from albumin for its action so the onset takes 1 to 2 hours the action last for 24 hours but to have a smooth continuous basal release it is usually advocated as a twice a day injection instead of once a day it is for the normal uh, prescription for the long acting drug and uh, it helps to reduce body weight that is an advantage which is getting that so obese patients are benefited by taking this insulin uh, with a good control the third recently developed This is a drug called D-Glutex. It is a modified insulin with one single amino acid deleted. It's like, just like the Datimer, the D-30th insulin, theonine is removed. And there they added the 14-chain fatty acid. Instead of that, here they have added 15-chain uh, fatty acid. So it is called hexa-deca-neodoic acid. So hexa means six, beta means six, uh, ten. So instead of fourteen chain, you can simply remember sixteen chain uh, fatty acid is added by gamma L glutamine at the lysine position of B twenty nine, and then this is a comparison picture tells you the how the glargin determine and the glutex are activated, and you can see here the sixteen chain fatty acid is added. Whereas for uh, Datimer it is a 14 chain which is added, and for uh, Glargin it is a two arginine added to beta two. So all these three long-acting insulin basically, if you see, they are causing a lengthening of the beta chain, making it more longer so that they can stay in the body for a longer time. And this comes in the trade name called Reciba, and. Uh, All of them are manufactured as this uh, pre-filled syringes, as I told you. This is a short-acting variety, this pro, aspart, and ulucil, and these are the long-acting ones. Uh, insulin glargin is commercially called Lantus, and uh, this levinir is the name for Detemir, which is also a flexipen, and Ludex, big Ludex comes as a again yeah, as a pen. They are all available as 100 units per ml and uh, uh, 200 and 300, depending upon the dose that you have to give. And they are given in doses of uh, 24 to 30, depending upon the blood sugar level. And uh, of course, quite expensive, as I told you earlier. So these are all the things I thought I will add to do. And to produce by the BRD. Okay. Any doubts or any questions on this? Yes, yes, sir.